Hi, I am Yayo Giesel, and this is the AMS Show. Today, our guest is Andy Farmer, band director from the Aspen School District. Thank you for being here, Andy. Thank you for having me, Yale. I'm happy to be here. I understand that you have been teaching with the Aspen School District for several years. How do you like it? Yeah, I've been in the Aspen schools. Now this is my second year teaching at the middle school and the high school. I love Aspen. I love the city. I love the culture. I love the terrain and the mountains. It's very different from where I originally came from, uh, Louisiana, where I was teaching for four years before I came up here. And so it's very diverse um, and pretty much the complete opposite term in terms of climate and terrain. You know, Louisiana, we were very flat, very swampy, very hot, very muggy. And in Aspen, we're very dry, we're very cold, very snowy, very mountainous. And so uh, it's quite the opposite. But within the schools, I love uh, what I do here at Aspen and the impact that I can make on all of the music students. That's really cool. How long have you been involved in music and what instruments do you play? Well, um, this is my sixth year as a teacher and I've been playing music since fifth grade uh, when I started uh, on the trombone. And since then, it's been about a little over 20 years since I started actually playing music. And I now know how to play all of the instruments because I know um, I have to work on teaching you and other students how to play those instruments. So if I don't know how to play them myself, then I wouldn't be a very good band director. <laughs> That's really good. I mean, why is it important that kids take music in school? Uh, well, sp speaking from my experience uh, and with music, music was very important to me because of the number of friendships and relationships I was able to uh, build with my classmates and my peers through about 10 or 12 years, like being in school, and also the relationships that I was able to, to um, create with my band director and my assistant band directors and my other teachers. And it, music for me was an outlet that you know, I could express myself without having to speak. And so I was able to connect emotionally and also physically um, and mentally. It was a good escape for me. And so taking my experience, I want to try to harness that for all of my students and kind of take them to where I was with music and how beneficial it was for me. Uh, and if, you know, just speaking for myself and my experience, it's everybody's experience will be different. And so my job now as a teacher is to take those experiences uh, at an individual level and shape them to every, every student so that they can have just a quality experience of playing music and a good relationship when thinking about music and having it be a happy experience for them. So after you saying that, I mean, I kind of hard it, find it hard to believe that, like, some students don't like your class. <laughs> I find it hard to believe, too. But you know what? I remember uh, growing up that I had classes I may not have liked as much as music and band. And so that just comes with it. And so it's a very long school year. And, uh, you know, with our fifth grade band classes, they're very large. And so it's very easy for some kids to sort of feel lost in that class and so maybe that's me they don't enjoy it as much in that sense but it's a very long year we've got our first concert coming up and so uh, after our first concert a lot of people's um, attitudes and perceptions change after that how do you think um, teaching middle school students and high school students are different uh, it's a good question because it, it's very different and it starts with um, the vocabulary that I use with the students. So as you get further and further along in high school uh, in music and as you get through sixth, seventh, and eighth grade with music, our vocabulary with music changes. And so how I teach my classes and how I communicate to all the students differs. And so when I'm teaching, compared to my high school classes and maybe your fifth grade band class, uh, I find myself that I, I find that I always have to remind myself that I am teaching fifth graders and that you guys know very, very little 
about music. And so that's very different from how I teach my sixth and seventh and eighth graders and my high schoolers because my our vocabularies broaden and they get um, very expansive. And so some of the words and the terms that I use and the teaching techniques that I use vary from each grade level. And so it is a challenge in that sense. And because sometimes I say things and to my fifth grade class and you guys just have very blank stares on your faces because you we haven't gotten to that point yet because I just come, came from teaching my high school class and so it takes me a minute to kind of rewind myself and make sure that I'm speaking the right language to the right classes. So that's one challenge that we have. Um, but at the same time, um, one of the benefits that I get from teaching both middle school and high school is that I, uh, I get to see firsthand uh, from fifth grade when all of uh, the fifth grade students started their instruments all the way up through middle school and through high school. So I get to see the progress that everybody gets to make from year to year to year as they continue on through band. And so um, that's one of the things I really enjoy about doing both high school and middle school groups. Um, do you use any technology in your teaching? Like, for example, digital metronomes. Yeah, so uh, we do use technology in our classrooms. Um, as we get on further into the year, we start incorporating more technology, especially at the fifth grade level. But um, at the sixth, seventh, and eighth grade into the high school, we do incorporate a lot of technology. And so one of the more basic forms that we use is um, we do use metronomes and tuners on our cell phones. And so we do, we don't always bring out phones, but it's just, and we don't always necessarily use those in class, but it is a tool that um, <clears throat> students can use and download um, for free uh, on their phones and have some music teaching tools uh, at their uh, disposal whenever they want. Uh, another thing we use and what we're going to start using more um, in the fifth grade level since uh, you guys all have brand new Chromebooks and every student in the middle school gets a Chromebook and so there's video recording software and audio recording software on there and so we can use those to uh, video or audio record um, performances or sort of playing tests or quizzes you know getting you guys to perform and record yourself and listen back to that and then submitting those things through Google Classroom and so that we can sort of track your progress throughout the whole school year um, as to, hey, this is where we started this year. Uh, this is how we kind of sounded in January and February. This is how we're sounding at the end of the year. And so we can do it as a gr at a group level. We can also do it at a very individual level. And so that's one of the benefits of all of the students having those Chromebooks is that we all have they all have the capability now now to um, record themselves. And so that is a great tool for us to use because where students are sitting and where they're performing sounds very different compared to what it sounds like in the audience or from where I'm standing. So when we're rehearsing in a big classroom like that, um, it's very easy to uh, not be able to hear yourself or kind of not really understand fully what it is that you sound like. And so um, kind of extracting that in a video or audio sense um, can really allow students to self-assess themselves, um, but also allow myself as a director or other teachers to provide um, almost real-time direct feedback to you guys. So, so that brings me to this conclusion of like, if students happen to have an, a, snare, a snare drum, like for, for my case, I play percussion, if I was gone, Mm -hmm. And I could just like take a recording of myself if there was a playing test in the period of I was gone sure. at home. Yeah. So that's another really useful tool. It is. That. And so we can also use this because I, uh, for a lot of performances and songs that we perform for concerts or um, uh, exercises that we're performing out of our book, um, I like to record those myself and then uh, distribute them to the students so that they can have uh, an example for themselves uh, to listen to, say, with Thanksgiving coming up. You know, a lot of kids are uh, traveling and going on vacation, and so they can still do some sort of learning and some sort of practice uh, for the songs that we have coming up for our concerts in December. I understand you have brought professional musicians in to help teach your students. Could you tell us about that? Yeah, so the Aspen School District, uh, even before I started, um, has had a great relationship with the Jazz Aspen Snowmass. And what Jazz Aspen Snowmass does is they bring in professional musicians throughout the valley who specialize on a certain instrument. Um, and for your sake, you being a percussionist and you know Chad very well, mm -hmm. um, he's one of our uh, instructors that comes in a couple times a week 
and they, um, he has a wife, Lori, who is a woodwind specialist. There's another, um, a few other people on their faculty that come in and help us out. Um, there's this gentleman named Patrick Fagan who plays uh, low brass. There's this uh, a, a great uh, gentleman by the name of Chris Bank, who's a fantastic solo um, saxophonist throughout the valley, um, playing alto saxophone and tenor saxophone. He, you can. At any time of the week, you know, every weekend, you can go to any club and probably see Chris Bank playing his saxophone. But there's a handful of other teachers that come in. And um, it is incredibly beneficial, especially at the fifth grade level, where our class sizes are very big. Our class sizes range from 35 to um, close to 50 students per class. And with that, within those classes, not everybody's playing the same instrument. And so, uh, in order for every student to progress at the level and at the speed that we need them to progress, having these other faculty members uh, through Jazz Aspen come in and work with you guys at a much more individual and specialized level helps you guys progress at a much quicker pace and not feel so lost. And so that we're able to get more focused, small group or even one-on-one -on -one attention with you guys. And so we are incredibly fortunate that we have that uh, relationship with Jazz Aspen Snowmass and it's incredibly beneficial to you uh, and the other students in our program as a whole. Hi. Um, do you collaborate with any of the other music teachers in our district? Yes, we do. Um, one of the biggest collaborations that we do is uh, every year is the, um, the, the musical, sorry, the, the high school musical every year. And so last year we did Peter Pan. Um, this year uh, we will be doing uh, Guys and Dolls. And so that's one of our biggest collaborations, working with not... Um, I'm sorry, working with uh, Erica Nottingham, who is our choir teacher at the middle school and at the high school, and then also working very closely with uh, Logan Carter, who is our theater teacher at the middle school and the high school. And so, and we just don't collaborate on that stuff. We meet uh, very, very regularly, um, a couple times a week, just to discuss, you know, kind of where our programs are at or what it is that we need uh, for each other, because we're all kind of in the same boat being um, teachers that teach both at the middle school and the high school level. Um, and we kind of all run into the same challenges, but we also uh, are able to bounce uh, ideas off of each other and get good feedback from each other because um, we're all, uh, we teach very similar styles and we teach along very similar um, aspects in what the students are learning in terms of music and in terms of choreography and dance and movement and setting and all that stuff. And so the language that we use uh, with our classes is very similar. So we can benefit a lot with that. We also work uh, very closely with Marnie White, who is our elementary music teacher. And she does a fantastic job of preparing um, all of the elementary students for more advanced music learning at the middle school level. And so she's somebody that we collaborate with uh, very often as well. And so our programs could not be where they currently are without Marnie doing all the work that she does at the elementary school. Does Erica ever like have choir concerts with Marnie? They, I don't believe that they have had a combined elementary and middle school and high school concert choir yet, um, or choir concert yet, uh, but they, uh, they do work very closely together um, and all of our concerts will be coming up in December, um, back to back to back. So on December 10th will be the middle school and the high school concert choir. And then on December 11th will be all of the band concerts. So everything from fifth grade band concert all the way through our middle school jazz, high school jazz, um, sixth, seventh, eighth grade concert bands and high school concert bands. That'll be on December 11th. And then on the following night, December 12th will be the fourth grade choir concert. So it's all uh, three days back to back to back, and so it's a, it'll be a week full of musical events. Um, when exactly can you join the like jazz band? So what we do at the uh, middle school, um, we didn't have a middle school jazz band last year because that was my first year and I was still kind of figuring out how things worked. But this year we did start uh, restart the um, middle school jazz band. And so once kids are in sixth grade, um, they can join the middle school jazz band. At the fifth grade level, we try to keep... Uh, you know, you all kind of corralled so that we're all progressing at the same rate and um, we don't want anybody to feel too overwhelmed because jazz music is, um, 
very different from the style of music that we are learning in uh, sort of the beginnings and laying those foundations of what we're doing in fifth grade. So we want to make sure in fifth grade that we're laying that foundation at, uh, very permanently so that everything else that comes after fifth grade fundamentally you guys know what to be doing in terms of note reading, rhythm reading, um, you know, pitch recognition, all that stuff, especially percussion technique. We want to make sure that stuff is very solid before we start introducing much more diverse uh, aspects of music to you guys. I understand some of our students did very well at the state competitions last year. Yeah, so both at the individual level and at the group level, last year we took all of our groups, 6th um, grade, 7th and 8th grade, and high school concert bands, um, and we went and performed at some um, music festivals where we get adjudicated or graded on how well we perform. And so all of the groups, and we went, I can't remember the name of the school, but we went all the way up to outside Steamboat Springs. And so it was a big, long day. Um, of all the groups performing and getting judged on how well they played, and they performed very, very well. Um, and we plan on doing that again this year with all of the performing groups. Now again, with fifth grade, we don't do that with fifth grade because uh, again, we just wanna make sure that um, you guys are getting a quality, good quality experience at a very fundamental level so that everything's in place for our, we're preparing you guys for next year so that we, we in sixth grade, we do progress much more quickly. We don't go as slowly. So in terms of the music that we read and the concerts that we play um, and the festivals that we do, it's a lot more uh, at the sixth grade level. But um, at an individual level, in terms of state um, recognition, there, last year we had three all-state musicians um, on their instruments. We had one student, Daniel Jansen, on French horn. He made um, the all-state orchestra and the all-state band last year on his French horn. We also had another student, um, Andrew Siebold, who was... Um, he played violin and he made all state orchestra on his violin. And then we also had another student, Jeremy Martin, who's in high school, who um, made the all state uh, jazz band playing drum set. And then this year, also, there's a few other things because there's um, last year we had an eighth grader who's now a ninth grader, uh, Evelyn Steffley. She plays the tuba and she actually, this past summer, um, she auditioned during the spring for this big music, uh, big orchestra event in London, and so she got accepted into that and was uh, traveled over to London, London this summer and played her tuba uh, at a concert over there with uh, musicians from all around the world at the middle school level. Um, then just a few weeks ago at an individual level, that former student Daniel Jansen, he uh, made the all-national honor orchestra. And so just a few weeks ago when I was out of town, we were down in Orlando together at our national convention and he was performing there. He is also going to be traveling this coming summer, 2020, to Vienna, Austria and playing in uh, an event over there on his French horn. That's really good. Yeah, it's a lot of stuff. And so there's a lot of opportunities out there that your instrument can uh, take you to places all over the world. Do you have any um, goals for competition this year? Uh, yeah, so much like what we were talking about with the events that we did last year, we're going to continue to do those events throughout the state. Um, and those are put on through uh, the Colorado Music Educators Association or the Colorado Bandmasters Association. Um, they put on these festivals all throughout the state where schools from middle school all the way through high school concert performing groups can go and get judged and adjudicated. Um, and, you know, and, it, and that's a great thing for the students because one, uh, it gets you guys outside of the school, it gets you guys exploring um, to the state, but it also gives you guys, uh, provides you guys feedback from uh, retired teachers or current um, professionals in the music field where they will provide much different feedback to you guys than I provide for you. And so getting that sort of feedback and kind of really seeing where our group is and how our group compares to what other groups are doing and how other groups are performing throughout the state, um, is, it's just incredibly good feedback for us because they, they record themselves, they record us, and they provide a wealth of information for us to how to improve our ensemble, how to improve our sound, how to improve this piece of music. And so, yeah, we definitely have plans for that again this year and so most of that happens in the springtime most of those festivals and those competitions happen start they start happening in february and they'll go all the way through april
So we just got to find the right one. Do you have any goals for the music program this year? Oh, we always have goals for the music program. And so uh, our goals, our goal is, our first and foremost, my goal for our program is to make sure that kids are enjoying it and having fun. And so if kids are enjoying it and they're having fun and, they're, and we're able to create a good experience for every single one of those students, then that leads to our other goal of retention and keeping kids involved in music, whether, you know, whether, you know, after fifth grade and students don't do band anymore, um, that's not such a big deal to me if they don't want to do instrumental band because in fifth grade they didn't get the opportunity to um, do choir. You know, they haven't done choir with Erica or done other things. So we, as long as kids are maintaining their uh, education through music, um, like it benefits all of our programs from choir, from theater to band, as long as kids are just staying involved. Now, you know, to be sort of selfish and biased, yeah, I want, I would love to see our music numbers, uh, instrumental music numbers grow and grow and grow and grow. And so that's our, 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 our second goal after making sure everybody's having a good quality experience in the classroom. Um, our second goal is to continue to build our program with the retaining every student. You know, we have a very unique opportunity in fifth grade um, that I get to see and teach every fifth grade student not every other teacher uh, has that opportunity. So I don't take that for granted. And so I, I re my fifth graders are one of my important, most important classes that I teach um, because this is your one and only experience and one, my one and only chance to make a lasting impact on you guys so that you guys in sixth grade can choose to stay in band. In seventh grade, you get to choose to stay in band. And so we just wanna make sure that the experience for all of you is uh, good enough that you keep coming back. So. Are there any performances soon that the public can attend? Yes, of course. And so like we, uh, I briefly mentioned earlier, um, specifically for the band, on Wednesday, December 11th, we will have um, our annual winter concert over at the District Theater. Um, we'll have two separate concerts because at 5 o'clock will be the fifth grade band concert and we have to have separate concerts because there's too many fifth graders there's 125 of you this year and so putting 125 of you on stage and with all of your families we and on top of the sixth seventh and eighth grade and the high school we I don't think we'd be able to fit everybody in the theater all at once and so um, so we're going to separate those concerts and so the fifth grade again is on December 11th at five o'clock and then immediately following the fifth grade concert <coughs> um, at 6.30 p.m. will be our 6th grade through 12th grade concerts. And so that there we'll be featuring again um, the middle school jazz band, the high school jazz band, the 6th grade concert band, the 7th, 8th grade concert band, and the high school concert band. So there'll be, if you think about it, there will be six different performing groups that night. Can you share any of the music that the students will be performing at the concert? Sure. And uh, what... Typically around this time, we try to, especially at the younger levels through 5th, 6th, 7th, 8th grade, we try to, um, you know, this is the holiday season, so we try to make it very festive in that sense. Um, and it's fun, especially for uh, the younger musicians, because the holiday music is very recognizable music, and it's music that everybody's pretty much grown up with. And it's not just Jingle Bells, but even Hanukkah music and Dreidel music, uh, Dreidel Dreidel song and all that stuff. It's very recognizable to you guys, um, which is why we like to perform that around this time of year, because when you guys are able to perform music that you know or recognize you're able to learn it at a lot in a lot deeper and a lot better sense and so um that's just with your guys's concerts but even at the um throughout the rest of the middle school and into the high school um we do you'll recognize a lot of holiday tunes but it's uh in a very different variety it's at a more complex level um and a much more challenging level and so it adds variety to the concert so Pretty much any sort of holiday music that you might be able to name, we're probably playing it at the concert. So, so I mean, what instruments will like the percussion players be playing at the ba at the concert? Like in all levels, like at the jazz bands, the yeah. high school band. It's a great question because uh, one of our most diverse sections that gets the opportunity to play. Um, 
such contrasting instruments are the percussionists. And so um, with the jazz bands, you'll see drum sets, full drum sets uh, on stage, but you'll also see some auxiliary instruments, anything from congos to bongos to tambourines to cowbells to claves, like, uh, I mean, just name any sort of instruments, anything from the ratchet, you know, um, and from there, or the fish gyro, you know, there's just any instrument you can throw into the jazz band setting. Um, now with a concert band setting, uh, especially at the fifth grade level where you guys get introduced to a, uh, a very diverse and a wealth of instruments from the bass drum to the snare drum to the triangle to the tambourine to the marimba to the timpani to the xylophone to the vibraphone that stuff to the crash cymbal suspended cymbal you guys will be you know getting your first sort of chance and experience to play those instruments for the concert uh for your first concert what's the best thing about teaching music <laughs> um that's you know, that's such a simple question, but such a challenging question at the same time, because I think first and foremost, it's just, I love music. I just love playing it. And so what I try to do is make that my love very clear to all of the students so that, you know, maybe they can connect to the music, you know, just that sort of kinesthetic action of being able to play your instrument or play music that you love um, on the radio or as you get better or music that you grew up with. It's just, there's no other power and feeling that um, music evokes. Like, there's nothing else in the world that can give you the feeling that music does, if that makes sense. And so that's why I love teaching it because when I'm playing music, I can really connect to that music and I can really, even if I'm just playing a tuba part and I'm just playing this whole note or like five whole notes in a row and I'm not really changing, but I'm contributing to something much larger than myself. And so being able to teach that idea into the students, including yourself, um, you know, it's a process from year to year to year to just dig deeper and dive down into what music is and why it's so important. Um, you know, music's been around since the beginning of time from what it seems like, but it, you know, we can really trace it back to thousands of years. Um, human beings have been playing music. And so we um, fully understand the importance of what it means to us to be human and to be able to perform music um, and what it means for us going forward into the future. And so it's just, you know, everybody in this world listens to music. And so there's just such a powerful connection that every human being can make with somebody else that they, you know, you may not be able to share the same language as somebody else. You may not understand their culture, but you can understand music if you know it. You know, you can understand a beat, you can understand a rhythm, you can understand a pitch or a harmony. And that's something that connects each and every one of us throughout the world. Is there anything else you would like to share with us today? I don't think so. I've really enjoyed my time here, and I really appreciate you asking me to be on this show, and I really appreciate all of the questions that you've asked and um, giving us, uh, giving the Aspen Music Instrumental Program uh, the opportunity uh, on this stage to kind of just talk about our program and get our voice out there. So thank you very much. Thank you so much for being on the show. Again, I am Yale Giesel, and you have been watching the AMS Show.